You've been seeking answers from every dermatologist, doctor, and all over the internet wondering what on earth this unbearable skin issue is. You know something's up, and you've been suffering and silenced for far too long. This podcast is going to bring awareness to the brutal reality that is topical steroid addiction and withdrawal syndrome. It will give you practical mental and physical tips to help you along your journey and provide you the strength you need to push through each day. You'll hear from real people battling this illness, as well as experts in the field, and I'm also going to share with you what's happening as I battle and conquer TSW. You are not alone, you're not crazy, and you will heal. If there's one thing I know, it's that anyone going through this hell is a warrior. My name is Jennifer Powers, and I welcome you to TSW Journey to Healing. Hello, what's going on? I'm glad that you're tuning into this episode, this solo episode, because I wanted to talk to you about how this this journey is so not linear. If you recall an episode maybe one or two weeks ago that I did, I was feeling great. I was high on life. I went to a party. My skin looked great. I felt great. And then a few days later, uh, I didn't relapse super, super bad, but you know, back to itching, dry, scaly skin. And I just want to let you know, first and foremost, if you have tuned in to each of these episodes, if you have subscribed, if you have shared the show, if you have rated or reviewed wherever you're listening to this podcast, whether it be on YouTube or the main podcast streaming services like Apple, Google, Spotify, what have you, I want to give you a huge, huge thank you sincerely because getting these comments coming in that I keep hearing and reading private messages and it's just, it's so worth it. It makes this God awful journey so worth it. And it makes what I'm doing here and producing and promoting the show, it's making it all worth it. So thank you. But today I really wanted to talk to you about how do you get through TSW when it comes to the sleeping thing? Okay. Because if you tuned into last week's episode, not my solo episode, but or you know what? Nope, it's not last week's. It's actually coming out tomorrow, so make sure you tune in. I have Luke Spalding on the show as a guest. Luke is a, he started a farm, a cannabis farm, and it's an awesome, awesome episode. I can't wait for you to listen and, and get some tons of golden nuggets, some great tips, great advice. It's going to be an awesome episode, so make sure you tune into that show tomorrow. But what we talked about many, many things. I always like to ask the people that I bring on the show, what do they believe for them personally is the worst symptom or side effect of going through topical steroid withdrawal? And Luke said that his was sleep, the lack of sleep, I should say. And I totally hear him on that one because there was so many months, especially months one through four, where I could probably count on two hands how many hours of sleep I got. And I, I wish that I was exaggerating there, but I'm not. So what I, why I'm bringing this back up, and I know we've had some episodes about sleep already, is I was going through probably month five and into month six, which I'm like in now, um, where sleep was getting really a lot better. I mean, there, there have been nights where I'm getting a full seven hours or so of sleep, which has been amazing. And it's crazy the things we take for granted the second that they, we get them back. You're like, oh my gosh, I will never again take anything for granted, okay? Especially sleep. So, but the last few nights, maybe the last week, week and a half or so, my sleep has had ups and downs, different patterns. It's been interrupted. The itch has been really, really bad. But the but the glass half full side of me, the positive side here is to say that it's not nearly what it was. So although it can be relentless, although I have broken my skin open, um, insides of my elbows right now are pretty, pretty, really, really dry. And those tiny little like slits, those little like cracks, um, that I've been able to claw open. And I do have, um, not gel nail polish on my nails right now. I don't have acrylic, but I have dip. So I don't know what part of the world you're in if they have the dip polish, which is pretty much like a gel polish. It's really, really thick. Uh, I don't know how I was able (laughs) to rip open my skin because that's one of my big tips for people that are dealing with that bone deep itch to make sure you either file your nails really, 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 really short or or get gel or acrylic nails. So anywho, uh, it's been waking me up and it's been so freaking annoying, but it hasn't been hours on end like it once was. So for that, I'm super grateful. But what do you do? How do you get through TSW 
what are the sleep tips for eczema or TSW prone people? Well, there's many things that I've talked about and shared on the show, but I want to talk about the few that I haven't mentioned. And I don't, I don't think in any of the episodes so far, because I think they're really important and they're good to point out. So a couple things, definitely no screen time. Now I know this is hard to say because we just want to distract ourselves. We want to keep our, we just, we just want to stay sane. We want to sometimes, you know, exhaust ourselves to the point of like, we're going to pass out because we're so tired. And sometimes that means the TV's on in the background. And maybe, maybe you're somebody who likes to fall asleep with the TV on, but there really is so many studies and so much out there that the blue light, the, the stuff coming off the screens, the TV screens, the phone, all of it, it's, it really has to come off at least 30 minutes before shut eye, realistically or ideally an hour before bed. So you really got to try to do the no screen thing. Another thing is an herbal tea kind of drink. So chamomile or chamomile, depending on how you say it, uh, or like a sleepy time tea with chamomile in it. Uh, Anything that's really warm is very soothing to the gut and the stomach. And avoiding all caffeine after, of course, after 5 p.m. is really, technically it should be like earlier than that, but definitely before 5 p.m. is going to help you a lot. So if you've been dragging a lot from your lack of sleep, you may be indulging in caffeine throughout the day to feel like you can function, but you really need to be careful of this. So make sure that you do that. And then another one, and I may have mentioned about meditation, but doing meditation is, it's a game changer. Um, There is a book, How to Lose Your Mind and Create a New One. Or it's called, I'm sorry, it's called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. I've mentioned it before on the show. Highly recommend it. In the beginning, part one and two of the book, it's a lot more about like neurological, what's happening in your brain, really understanding brain waves and alpha, beta, theta, all of that. Um, fascinating, fascinating book. But part three is teaching you how to meditate and it does it in such an amazing amazing way cannot sing this book's praises enough it's in the shop page under books in my on my both my amazon um my amazon store my amazon page as well as the website tswjourneytohealing.com under the shop tab so you can go check out some great resources and great products that may help you along there as well but meditation finding a quiet space best way to meditate is sitting actually with your back straight. I know sometimes people like to lay down, but highly recommend you give this a try. Also reach out to me. If you are somebody like how I was, where I'm like, my brain doesn't shut up for five seconds. There's no way I can ever meditate. I can't quiet my mind. There's a lot more to it. And it's a lot less of being so strict and regimented. And it's just really, you have to understand the purpose of it and it can, it can do wonders. Okay. And then antihistamines. Antihistamines, like Benadryl, sometimes have been my best friend. Uh, I try to avoid over-the-counter or medications um, and do this as naturally as possible. But when you really are struggling your ass off, popping a Benadryl or an antihistamine can actually really, really help reduce the itching, which is keeping you up in the middle of the night. So that's another thing. Now, a couple of these I did mention before, but this one I know I haven't. Keeping your bedroom tidy, okay? So making sure that you have, that your bedroom, your mind only associates that with a beautiful, comforting night, wonderful night's sleep. So making sure that it's tidy and cleaned up, making sure that it's quiet and calm and peaceful. It's like this beautiful, peaceful oasis. Like you don't want to do work in your bedroom. Now, some of us work from home and the the day post COVID era that we're living in. Maybe you have been working from home even before that. Maybe you're working from home now because you're dealing with TSW. Okay. Even if you are not working right now. Okay. If you are just focusing on healing, maybe you got let go. Maybe you stepped away from work, whatever the situation may be. Do not work in your bedroom. Like I'm going to say this again. Do not get your laptop out, get all cozy in your bed. Do not associate working or doing any kind of work with your bed. When you do that, your mind is associating this place, this space with more than one thing. And when you you need to like honor your bedroom as this oasis of calm, okay? You want to, honestly, 
if at all possible. I am right now at down at my family beach house in Ocean City, New Jersey. I am not in my home, which is outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My home in PA has a TV in the bedroom, which I very, very, very rarely use, but it's there, and so it's a temptation. My room down here, no TV. If you can possibly do it, take the TV out of your room or just do not have a TV in your room. It, it, this, it, It's such a more modern societal thing where we decided to bombard our bedrooms with all the electronics, the cords, the TVs and stuff. Way, way, way back when, that's not... That's, that's not what it was for. <laughs> it was strictly a room for shut-eye, for calm, for prayer, for meditation, for sleep, relaxation. You got to go back to that, <laughs> okay? I know it's so tempting to just like, oh, well, I woke up, my phone's my alarm clock next to me, my computer's on the floor charging, I just pull up my laptop, I can stay under the covers, I'm uncomfortable, just let me live, let me be. I'm going to do whatever I want to do wherever I want to do it. But I'm telling you, more times than not, it is going to hurt you in the end. Because when you want to have some shut eye and it's the end of the day and you're ready for bed, your mind is associating that place with so many different things. And it's it's bizarre. I almost want you to like look at, and that book, by the way, that I mentioned, it gives you an amazing, I mean, biology, scientific facts of how our mind and our body, are they operate as two separate things. So Obviously, we know our mind and our body are two different things, but we want them to kind of operate as one. Sometimes we want our body to be in control, not our mind, and that's the power of meditation. But you really want to not confuse your brain, especially when you're going through something like this. You need all the help and assistance you can get. So you and I, we have to do our part of assisting our brain. We have to help it out, okay? We can't just put it all out there and just live exactly as we once did we need to assist this healing journey and so this is one of the ways that you can do that okay the other thing is if you are a fan of essential oils i sure am big time you can create that gentle like aroma in your room so buying a diffuser okay they are you can find them anywhere i have some ones that i love i have um friends that are affiliates of companies and I've gotten a, I've gotten a bunch of them. I, I actually have them in multiple rooms of my home. And when it comes to my bedroom, I try to smell or diffuse the scents that are very, very calming and peaceful. So lavender is my number one, both for, I mean, for so many purposes. I absolutely love it. But there's a whole bunch of other ones. I can give you suggestions if you want to. If you need it, reach out, leave a comment, ask a question. Happy to share uh, my top suggestions for you for both the diffuser and then the essential oils themselves that I like to diffuse. And sometimes I blend some together, but when in doubt, lavender, lavender, lavender. Okay. The other thing is making sure that your quiet space, your bedtime has a cool temperature. I do not know about you, but the heat, no way. F that. I go crazy. And it's funny because I did another episode, which you may have listened to all about my infrared sauna obsession and also vitamin D getting out in the actual sunlight, it is so incredibly healing, okay? Yet knowing that they, those two things warm your body temperature straight up there, when it comes to bedtime, hell no. It has to be cool, cool, cool. So if you can handle opening a window, getting fresh air, that's excellent. Obviously, if you suffer with seasonal allergies, maybe things like pollen or some things in the air can actually flare you up and make you, you know, not good. So I say that knowing you, you got to know what you can do for you. Um, what I notice is depending on my location, like right now where I am, I can sleep with the windows open. If it's a cool breeze there, I do not have any issues where I'm at right now. So you just got to pay attention and know your surroundings and your environment. But, you know, making sure if you can't do that, have a fan going, have the AC on, make sure you're not sweating under tons of comforters and blankets and quilts and things like that. You really do want to make sure it's cool, okay? So although it's tempting to get get close to your your uh, significant other, or whatever, and get real cuddly and close, which obviously can increase the body heat, but also under all the covers and things like that, just be aware of it. Try it out. Sleeping with it cool is going to be a good friend to you, okay? The other thing is natural cotton bedding. So. I actually, in the beginning of this, didn't realize that that was a thing. And then when I got rid of all my sheets and I got really good cotton sheets 
and cotton pajamas, huge difference. Definitely helped me a lot. Um, what was the other thing? I'm trying to think. What was the other thing I wanted to tell you? Oh, you know, like doing some, believe it or not, doing some, whether or not you practice yoga or not, just doing like 10 minutes of some very light stretching is really good for many reasons. Number one, it's good because you're changing up your position and you're stretching and stretching is just always good for the body. But number two, you're distracting yourself. You're focusing your attention on something like these relaxing postures and just getting into a practice of like unwinding. It's really tranquil and creates this really good positive mindset for sleep and shutting the body down. So um, try to do that. And um, I think there was one or two other ones that I was thinking. I'm doing this from the top of my head. So um, I think the last thing I can... Well, not the last thing. That's not true. I just thought of a few other ones. Let's get into it, shall we? Okay. (laughs) Having the intention that you're going to sleep setting a positive intention is phenomenal. Okay. So really believing, I know that this is easier said than done. Believe me. I know that you might want to like smack me for saying this because it's, I know, I know it's easier said than done. Just, just know that I, I am saying this and I know that, but if you believe that you're going to have a good rest, good night's sleep and say it out loud or say it to yourself, say it in your head and really truly believe it, I am telling you the mind is incredible what it can do. There, there's so much healing that we can do from our own minds alone. If we can just get our mindset in the right place, we can focus on the right thing. If we don't focus on the PTSD we have around bedtime, the dreadful, oh my gosh, the insomnia that's going to happen, my itching's going to get me up, assuming that, oh, night's the worst, it's always the worst, it's going to get bad, I'm, you're feeling nervous, you're feeling anxious, you're going into it thinking that this is going to be terrible like every other night it's going to happen. You're not going to have a good night. So why not just ask yourself this question when you're, I know you might be rolling your eyes at me right now, but ask yourself the question. If I go into something hopeful, positive, not like negative Nancy, not, not saying like, oh, it's going to suck like every other night. What's the worst that happens? If the worst thing that happens is yes, you do still have an interrupted night's sleep. At least you went in and you gave it your all. You gave it your best effort. But what if you have a better night's sleep? Wouldn't those positive affirmations been worth it? A hundred times over, yes, right? So getting setting that positive intention. And by the way, these things take practice because sometimes, especially in the beginning, we're really kind of like telling ourselves a lie because we don't really believe it. But over time, you have to train yourself to really believe in the thing that you want. And that goes for everything in life, by the way, whether you believe in manifesting or not, setting the right intentions for your day, for your activities, for your sleep, for whatever it is is only going to help you. Okay. And then when you get into bed, so these are all things to do before getting into bed, but when you get into your bed, I want you to accept kind of similarly to setting the right intentions, but accept the itch. So if you typically do itch at night, just accept it, own it. Okay. Almost like, and this is going to sound crazy and I've done this before, but guess what? It's, it's crazy what happens. I actually acknowledge. So let's say I'm in the bed And even if I'm doing all the things like, okay, I'm going to have a rested, wonderful night's sleep. It's going to be a glorious night. I'm going to wake up feeling refreshed. I'm not going to get interrupted. But then let's say I didn't fall asleep yet and the itching begins. I actually acknowledge it and I actually talk to it. Talk and you're like, okay, Jen, now you lost me. Now you're crazy. I'm never tuning in again, but (laughs) stick with me for a second. Sometimes I'll say, all right, here we go. All right, itch. Let's go. Let's get this. Let's get this over with. And sometimes I'll say things like, okay, it's all right that you're itchy. I understand that you're itchy. I know that this will pass. This is going to pass. Like, don't beat yourself up. It's easy to, look, I'm saying that and now I'm itching my arm right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but don't beat yourself up every time you scratch. Just see this as a normal part of this healing process of what your body is going through. You're listening to your body. You're paying attention to it, but accept it. The other thing is to try to slow down your breathing. This is also something that you have to be very conscious about because it's something that we do every day. That's how we're alive right now, right? We are breathing. That's keeping us alive. But paying attention to your breath is something that I'm, you know, I never paid attention to it in my entire life. And only in this past last year did I start to learn more about breath work and breathing in general. It's actually, if you can, if you can make a conscious effort to slow down your breathing, it's going to lower your heart rate 
And there's so many different techniques out there. There's so many. I can't wait to share more with you and have some breathwork practitioners on this show so that we can really help you learn and educate you on that. But a really quick and easy one is to just breathe in for four seconds, hold for four, breathe out for four, 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 four. Okay. It's, it sometimes can actually help if you focus while you're, you like say in your head, I'm going to breathe in and I'm going to breathe out and saying it or counting on your fingers. One, two, three, four, as you do it, it's really, really powerful. Um, the other thing you can try to do is listen to some very, very quiet, relaxing sleep music. So maybe it's some classical, maybe it's the sound of the of waterfalls, although sometimes that can make you go pee. So <laughs> or have the feeling of going to the bathroom. Uh, but you know, anything that's soothing and relaxing to you. Um, the Calm app is available for I think iOS, Androids, phone, like all of them. Um, there's another one called White Noise. So if you do sleep with your phone in your room, or you can actually buy a physical white noise machine, something like that can really, really help you. Okay. And that's, you know, this episode wasn't, I didn't intend for it to be all about sleep because I know we have one about that, but I really want to help you understand that there are so many things that you can try to assist you. And that conversation that I had again with Luke, which is coming out tomorrow again, um, which is what I think episode 20, what are we at? I think, yeah, the one with Luke is, oh, you know what, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, we have another, we have Layla, her episode's coming out tomorrow. Luke's is actually coming out on July 6th, 2022. So he will be episode 27. Layla's, oh my God, awesome. So make sure you tune in tomorrow to Layla's. It's going to be an amazing episode. Luke's is also amazing. Layla will talk all about the gut health tomorrow, which guess what? If you're not getting a good night's sleep, there's another possibility happening here, which is that your gut is inflamed. You are not taking care of your gut health, and that actually can be keeping you up in the middle of the night as well. So I'm really glad I just tied all this together. Look at that. (laughs) All, All wonderful. So anyway, just make sure that you are, instead of beating yourself up and instead of being hard on yourself, being down in the dumps, which... By the way, it's okay if you are. I'm sending you an air hug right now. I'm sending you a hug through the through the podcast, but it's okay if you do that. It's just not okay if you live in that space permanently. So try your best to get out of there as quick as possible. Give yourself that grace and the compassion that you deserve and say, this too will pass. This will not last forever. I'm feeling it right here in this moment. And even if these are moments that turn into minutes that turn into you know, hours, it's still not a permanent state of being. This is not how you're going to be for your whole life. So let's make sure we can take those baby steps forward and help aid ourselves. when sleep is just so, so important because it affects our mental state so very much. And when we're not getting a, an adequate number of sleep, not only are we not healing as best we could or as fast as we could, but it's also affecting our personality. We're getting, you know, brain fog and there's a whole bunch of issues. So with that, I leave you. And I want to say thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Now, I do have something exciting happening for you. I definitely want you to continue to check the TSW Journey to Healing blog because I will be having a pre-sign up for this TSW journal that is going to be exclusive for you. And it's going to be so incredibly powerful. I have taken tons of polls, asked tons of questions from you guys, figured out what exactly you wish that you had in the beginning or even now going through what you're going through, something that you could help track things better, things that work, things that don't work, and also have something that's a powerful keepsake that you'll always be able to have that you can look back on at the hardest time of your life and know that you are truly a warrior. You truly can overcome anything and that you can do hard things because you've done it and you've proven it. So very excited about this. Make sure that you continue to check the blog, and um, get on the email, get on the list so that you're the first one to know when it, when it launches, when it's available for you. I can't wait to give it to you. It's going to be amazing. Thanks so much. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. With your help, we can spread awareness together. So please share the show with anyone you know who may be struggling with a medical condition and using steroids to treat it. And be sure to check out the blog for helpful resources to aid you along your TSW journey at tswjourneytohealing.com.